<laughs> Why did I stick the record on? Um, <laughs> I need to record that silence. I was just saying, um, it's very noticeable that competitiveness is alive and well here. And um, I would have definitely said it was me that was competitive. Turns out not. Just like all traits, you know, that is, so the illusion is the ownership. And of course, then the ownership can have the illusion that, okay, with the absence of me, I'll lose all those traits that are not so, um, not so desirable. Like competitiveness, say. But um, competitiveness has not gone anywhere. The conditioning is what it is. The body is what it is. The mind or the brain, however you want to think about thinking, is as it is. This message just hasn't got anything to say about how it is or why it is. Just simply saying none of it's yours. It's just not. <laughs> and um, there's great freedom in nothing belonging to you. It, it can feel disappointing. It can, feel, it can feel quite dreadful in the seeming falling away, in the free fall, so to speak. You hear that word spoken, that phrase said quite a lot in non-duality, free fall. But there really is no, <laughs> when there's no one falling, the free fall is absolutely still. <laughs> so the falling If I was going to describe how it was here, the falling was the sense of me falling away and that sense of losing the ground that I stood on. But of course, that was the, that's the illusion. That was, there, was, there was never anyone standing on the ground. There was just ground and standing. That's how it is. There's ground and there's standing on the ground. There's feet on the ground. But when, when the sense of, if, if the sense that it's no longer feels really, doesn't feel like me standing on the ground, then that's that sense of free fall, which can be terrifying. That sense of groundless. And you could say this is groundless, but of course, there's the ground. It always felt as though I had to hold on. I had to hold on to what I got. If we're talking about anything, it's the, it's the seeming absence of that. That there's no longer any desire to hold on. And the holding on or the need to hold on is, where, is the root of most fear. Not all fear, but the majority of fear is what I've got to lose. And really, there's nothing to lose. And that can sound cold, but really it's not. It's not cold at all. It can sound heartless, as though this is a message or this speaking in this way doesn't have any heart. 
but it's not like that at all. And this idea of non-attachment, of detachment, of course, that's a ploy that self would um, adopt or sound attractive because I'd love to detach from my suffering. I'd love to detach from my pain. <laughs> but if you've tried it, which I'm guessing most of you have, it, it, it can work temporarily or seemingly for a little while and maybe bring some temporary relief. But again, it's just a game. It's just a game for me to play that now I'm a detached, I'm detached from, so these thoughts aren't mine. And often I think there's confusion about when you hear this, that maybe it's, it sounds as though it could be speaking about, that I'm speaking about detachment. You know, that I don't own any of it. Well, it's not that. <laughs> there's neither ownership or disownership it's not neither of them make any sense it's it's just the end of any of that there isn't one who is now not one It's really no change at all. It's really dreadfully ordinary. And in that, the ordinary is wonderful. Rather than waiting for the extraordinary. I was always waiting for Surely this can't be it, this mundane, ordinary, everyday, getting up, eating, looking out of the window, idle thoughts. There's more to life than this, surely. <laughs> well, there is, there is, in stories, there is, of course. Stories will tell of wonders beyond belief. And it's fine, you know, that's where self likes to live, in fantasy. And in, in living in fantasy, it's, it can seem as though this ordinary miracle, unknowable wonder that is life, is seemingly missed, most of it's missed. It's never missed, but it seems like it is because I am always moving away. I'm always distracting myself in imagination, in fantasy, in memory, in nostalgia. There's nothing wrong with any of those. They're also, I'm not saying that you know, you'd have to get rid of those. They still occur naturally, but they're just what they are. Not some ulterior, um, alternative reality, some alternative life that I could be living. You know, I could have a better life than this. <laughs> could you? <laughs> And there is, um, there is mourning, there is sadness for the loss of all that. There is mourning and loss for me. You know, how hard I tried. That, there, there could be immense compassion for the one who tried so hard to make her life work, 
to make a sex success of himself to achieve what he thought would bring him fulfillment. <laughs> There's great self-compassion in the loss of self. I mean, it makes no sense, does it? it makes no sense at all. And that self-compassion isn't for self, it's for all selves, for the very nature of self. And so in that, you just see everyone as just innocently trying to make their life work. And there's immense compassion for that, much more than there ever could have been when I was preoccupied, completely preoccupied with my own. Because <laughs> you've caught, you've heard me call self a complete bastard before, because um, <laughs> um, a lot of the time that's how that's how I experience myself. But there's a, there's another there's another side of that that now it's very obvious that self is completely innocent, so innocently trying to be good, be better, be worthy. All of those things that, I, that self says I should be and I could be. And there's some, um, again, there's compassion for that. Because the way, the way different selves go about trying to be good enough I mean, there's no end to the ways, but that sense of that trying, the effort, that's universal, it seems, for human beings. Well, hi, everybody. Um, nice to see you all. If you want to ask anything about what I've just said or anything else, then by all means do. And if you want to share anything, then feel free to do that as well. And thanks for um, so many of you coming to the Nothing FM thing last night, even though some of you struggled with the, to get a good sound and picture. I don't know if you heard, but we had about half an hour before trying to sort out all the technical problems, which obviously we didn't sort them all out. Did try to then. I think because it's this, it's a new, it's a new way of doing it. When it's just simply through Zoom, then it's simple. That Emerson and Noel are trying to do it through four different platforms simultaneously. I can't even begin to think about it just hurts my head to even contemplate <laughs> how they're doing it. Hi, Faith. Unmute yourself, Faith. You were much more handsome last night. The actual visual reception, although there was a problem with sound, visually it was much, much better. What, because I was completely pixelated? Is that what you're suggesting? I don't know. What, I have no idea. You just... It was a much better visual. It was a much better, clearer picture. What better than this one? Oh yeah. Well, there's no, there's no accounting for that, Faith. Other than because I've got, I'm using the same laptop and the same camera, hmm. different background. Yeah. Maybe those colours um, went with my eyes. 
you know, they just contrasted and yeah, it may have enhanced it. Yes, the colouring. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm arguing with you. You just said I was extremely handsome, so I should just take it. You should. Yeah. Thank you, Faith. <laughs> but there is implied that I'm not today, so that's why I'm a bit iffy about it. The it's not so sharp. The is it not? The picture's not so sharp. Oh, okay. We haven't come to see how pretty you are. <laughs> Thanks, Faith. <laughs> Flattery will get you a long way. Oh, it never has. <laughs> <laughs> <You've>... <laughs> Keep trying. <laughs> we could see and hear everything you said yesterday, and that was the most important part. You could hear it. Could hear it and see you. Yeah. And, uh, I think you're as handsome today as you were yesterday. Oh, all right. I, we, this is going to get competitive now. <laughs> Tim? Hi. Hello. You hear me? Yeah. Oh, cool. Hello. Um, you're, very, you're very handsome, by the way, just in case. Brilliant. Now everyone has to say that before they <laughs> Oh, my God, everybody this. stop. <laughs> No, don't, don't stop. How do I pronounce, how do I pronounce? And anyway, it was my Wi-Fi. I, I actually do have a question. Um, yeah, so, is it Diana? Yeah. Yeah. So I was gonna ask you after, um, I mean, do you feel like, um, uh, how, do, how do you phrase it after the, the death of the self? Or how do you, I, I, I still haven't got, you know, the, the traditional way is to say after the shift. After the shift, after the shift. I don't, I don't tend to say that, but that is what's, yeah, most people say that. I just want to make sure the language is uh, in alignment. Uh, don't worry about it, Diana. Uh, but um, do, do, did you experience sort of um, a greater sort of alignment in your life? Things kind of falling into place, kind of clicking together in a more, I don't know, beautiful Sorry. way? Sorry, Diana. I just have to laugh because it was exactly the opposite. <laughs> it all fell apart. It all fell apart, Diana. You know, on a on a surface level, on a on a relative level, it seemed to. After the shift. During and after. Just a story. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. But you know, the whole story. You know, the beautiful spiritual stories of. You know, it's itself that's um, stopping life being in alignment, and then life will align itself w without the ego or whatever stories you've heard. Um, just don't believe any of the stories. No, I, I'm not. I'm not projecting any belief. Uh, I was okay. just curious. Uh, Sorry, that was me projecting that you, you know, I was projecting the belief onto you there. I know, I know. I was feeling, I was feeling the projection. I was Sorry. just kind of laughing <laughs> back at you. Um, but so in just, hmm, that's, that's really interesting. Uh, so do you feel like the things that fell apart were the things that, that were sort of superfluous that needed to fall apart? Um, was there, was there any, uh, <laughs> Um, was there like any? I'm going to project. I'm going to project again in a minute, Diana. Now you've said that, because <laughs> you know you, you're trying to you're trying to make the falling apart into a good thing as well. There. Well, I mean, but in terms of what you were saying before about holding on, there's a yeah. lot of a person is really like holding on to to some fantasy, to some to some um, idea of itself, of its life, of what it's supposed to all look like, and when you stop holding. I mean, things do tend to fall away, but yeah, the things that were sort of like dead wood anyway. Um, right. Did you experience? I mean, what was your or no? Not at all. It was like no, not, no, none of that. Um, it was uh, so there was no, there was really no noticing that that anything had fallen away. Oh, wow. And um, falling away is a little bit too tame, really. Ripped, ripped and torn away is closer. Well, something was registering that. 
Oh, the ripping and tearing was very registered. Like but what? after after this, right? This is this is the tale of the tale of awakening or the tale of liberation, which doesn't mean anything because I don't think there's a way that it happens because it doesn't really happen. But what was registering the ripping, the ripping and shredding? There's no knowing of that. There's no, it's, Diana. There's no. So the ripping and the tearing away was happening to me. That was registered as happening to me. And then in the seeming, once that was over, it seemed, <laughs> it stopped or I woke up and there was no more ripping and tearing. Then I couldn't really say anything after that. And I didn't say anything other than, oh my God, it's so empty. But there was a, there was a wonderful piece about the emptiness. So the emptiness that I'd always dreaded, there it was, <laughs> everything completely empty. And um, it was wonderfully peaceful. But there was something that was, that was a noticing life. You'd think, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you would, yeah. No. But yet here we are talking on a screen. Yeah. Talking on a screen. And yeah, I mean, this is happening. I mean, this is happening. That's undeniable. Right. It could be it could be emptiness happening, but I won't it, I won't deny this happening, no. You won't deny it's happening. No, it is happening, yeah. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah. Yeah, and we're both like sort of on the same page here, more or less, more or less, not exactly, far from it, but. <laughs> well, the thing is about the page, uh, the, thing about, the thing about you can't be on this page. There's, there's nothing, there isn't a page to be on with this page. So you, when Diana, you're, you, you're speaking to another human being and you're saying, well, are we on the same page or not? Then, then we're just trying to align our stories of what, how this is and what it is and how it works and what is actually seeing, what's doing the doing, how this runs, how is it working? How, how, what is the mechanism of life? And then um, we can come to some kind of agreement and then we could say we're on the same page. Well, this, right. this, is like, um, this is like burning the book. But you, you're, I'm hearing you, I'm hearing your voice. I'm seeing your yeah. handsome, handsome face, yeah. face and you're hearing my voice and, um, and making certain assumptions, assumptions, assumptions. Oh my God. Right, I'm trying not to make assumptions, Diana, but, but what, <laughs> where you, when you're saying you, what you're emphasizing is, well, there must be something registering that's something, really, something yeah. is here, like something is here. It might not be Tim, but something is here. I mean, human being. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Are we on but, the same page? Isn't Tim the human being? That's what I'm saying. There's a human being that's here and another one over there. So, but then the shift was the shift was out of the human being, like being no. uh, operating, like the operating manual used to be the human being and it's no, no longer the human no being. well that's the the only thing i want to communicate is that of course it was the human being i said it wasn't i said it was me and now you say it's the human being but the human being isn't the operating isn't the the hardware or the software anymore like it used to be i i'm if you use computer terms, you'll lose me off your page. Uh oh. Do not, if you start, if you start using. I don't want to trigger you, Tim. No, you triggered me. You triggered what, me. What are you, you comfortable you, with? You start, you start <laughs> related human beings to computers, then you're losing me straight away. What metaphor do you All with? those, there's one thing I can't stand. I never could when I was a seeker and I was reading a lot. If there was an analogy made, about how human beings worked and they used computer language for an analogy of human beings. 
used to piss me right off. <laughs> and it looks like it still does. Apparently. How are we, how are human beings like bloody computers? I don't think we could get further apart. Well, doesn't the mind, the human mind. You know, how, how much love is there in a computer? But we're not talking about, but are we talking about Sorry. love? Are we Sorry, talking about, you love triggered or are we talking me. about the, the human mind. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how uh, the, the human the human minds don't know how to do love. I mean, the love that humans do is a very conditional love, but this is unconditional love. So it's it's not it's not it's not comparing apples to apples. Uh, does, does that does that make sense? Well, if there's a recognition of con con uh, unconditional love, I can be pretty certain it's not coming from computers. With the okay. Alrighty, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not attached to that, uh, to that analogy. Uh, but the, okay, I don't know what the point was. There was a I, point. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I hijacked your question when you used the, yeah, when you said operating system or something, and I thought, oh my god. Um, what yeah. was, what, yeah, uh, what were you, what were you asking me again? Uh, I was asking about the shift as experienced yeah. by you um, and um, and yeah I mean I'm just trying to I'm just trying to kind of drill down a little bit because um, there's like a texture to it there's a, a feel a vibration uh, that's different like the human mind has a kind of mechanical I don't want to trigger you, but uh, the hu oh, human mind, it is kind of like just recording and remembering and analyzing and judging, uh, calculating. Yeah, you could say that. But this is different. I mean, this after the shift, it's 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 there's more quiet. There's more silence. Oh, yeah. Oh, you definitely. Yeah. yeah. And that feels better or worse or neutral, totally neutral. Um. I'm not, I'm not like trying to, I'm not like trying to trick you. Well, I, I have to say, I will, I, I have to concede that it's better because otherwise I, I wouldn't speak about it. Would you say that there's? But it's more certainly not better how I imagined it would be better at all. But do you no, feel like in general there's a greater sense of ease and harmony? Um, the thing is, all of those ideas. No, there's none of that. You know, so the the whole idea of harmony is that there is disharmony. So the notions of harmony and disharmony just become irrelevant. The, the whole the whole feeling that or the whole um hope that without me then there will be harmony well no that's life is exactly as it is so it can it just it can be disharmon disharmonious or harmonious it's, well, I'm, I'm 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 speaking from just my my own experience it feels yeah. I'm, i don't i don't claim to have experienced the shift um, but I do, I can report that, um, with the silence, there does seem to be a greater sense of ease and e harmony. Yeah. Yeah, harmony. I'll, yeah. I'll go with ease and peace. Unconditional love, which is definitely not, I mean, with, but the unconditional yeah, love, of course, not human love. it's not human love. That's a really, that's a different, it's a different sort of thing. It's a different quality of love. Well, there wouldn't be any, there wouldn't be any love without humans. There wouldn't be any, you know, uh, that's just, you know, who's talking about unconditional love. It seems like I, I haven't seen any other, other uh, creatures. Trees aren't talking about it. And um, the dogs aren't talking about it. But they are vibrating. We're, I mean, we're talking about it. But there's so much love in trees and flowers. Oh yeah. And dogs. I could, 
Recognized by recognized by who? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question. What recognizes it? But it's fun to play. It's fun. I'm to just, play. I've I've just said well, and you know, I'm not going to say any more than human beings really that's oh yeah that's i guess i guess i i guess i would differ i would differ with you um the human was i mean okay again i don't claim to have any shift but i i am speaking from experience like an experiential not just a belief yeah uh, of what i think is it, it's supposed to be like it's not that i'm just what i've I'm reporting yeah. that 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 there's tremendous trees emanate. There's so much love in trees and sky oh, and yeah. flowers and uh, and it's like when when there's nobody there, then everything is everything is open and available. Yeah. And there does seem to be more harmony. Uh, a, doesn't mean that there isn't any disharmony, but definitely a greater sense of ease and harmony. I was just curious about, yeah, what you, you know, what your, it sounds like it, it, a little something different. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, yeah, beautifully empty, I would say. And there, everything, everything is equally beautifully empty. A tree or a dog or a human being. That's the unconditional love. Thanks, Diana. I know that was a totally unsatisfactory um, answer it. to your question. And I do apologize for you triggering my <laughs> my sensitivity around relating human experience to computers it's a it's a common analogy um i didn't i didn't invent it uh no not at all no it wasn't a criticism of you it was that that you know. analogy that's all no i know yeah i i, I didn't take it personally good <laughs> thanks diana thank you I will, I will just pick up on that whole conversation. Really, I haven't got anything to say about how this works. You know, really all that, when we're making analogies about, you know, functioning um, and how it really is, as opposed to how I think it is, or um, getting a greater clarity on how reality really is, how human beings really are. This has nothing to say about that. This whole message is so saying each human being is each human being as it is, just not without the driver, the doer, the owner, the manager, the thinker, the feeler, the relator. doesn't really have very much to say about anything else. I don't, anyway. That's, that's really all we're speaking about. The rest, everything else, is all this has to say is it's as it is. I mean, blindingly obvious. Just dreadfully obvious, dreadfully simple too simple so diana's question is is complex it's you know it's analytical and of course there's nothing wrong with that but this is this is i could still you can still do the analysis but it's seen for what it is purely a game to play that will say well now i've got greater understanding now i have greater clarity now I'm closer to the truth. Now I'm closer to reality. And all I want to say is, if you could, forget it. I know you can't. 
if you could, <laughs> don't bother. Don't bother. There's no working this out. Who the hell do you think you are? You know, so you're a human be being with a big brain that can do analysis and can find complex patterns. Well, that's not what we're speaking about. That's as it is. So what? You can understand, you know, the answer the, to the ultimate question of existence, which if you've read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is 49. It's not, it's 42. See, I don't even know the answer. I don't even need you. That sums it up, doesn't it? I can't even remember the actual answer to the ultimate question. <laughs> well, that just shows how important the answer is. I did that to illustrate it. It wasn't that I'm incompetent and can't remember. I Brilliant. Just, I just can't remember. 42, is it? 42? It's 42. Which is brilliant, isn't it? I mean, if ever there was a great parody of human endeavor to find the answers to life, 42 is brilliant. It's a lovely insignificant number, isn't it? You struggle to make any, you know, it's got no balance to it. It's just not even a nice number. I came up with a better one. But, but all seeking is as futile as 42. That's, that's, why I, that's why when I was a boy and I read that, I think I was a late teen when I read that, and I absolutely adored it. Because there's a, there's a mockery of science and spirituality in it, which I like. It, it's quite balanced. It, it virtually mocks everything. <laughs> I've always been a fan of mockery. If you're not a fan of mockery, I'm suggesting you go down that road because in that you'll see that all, you know, mocking of all the great ones, the special ones, the genius, the spiritual master, you know, if you could just walk by and just gently push them off there, you know, tip the throne over. I've always liked that. Scott has his hand up. Hi, Scott. Hey, Tim. Hey, everyone. I like I like what you were saying before about compassion, self-compassion. You know, I, I used to have this kind of, I thought I, I had to be in a hurry, like to save the planet or save others or help. And I realized it was like an impatience with myself. Yeah. In, in a way, um, you know, the last... The awakening is doing itself and that's kind of another blow to the ego is i can't even help <laughs> my own death happen um no. and so it's just self-compassion is like okay i'm really am powerless here it's yeah and yeah. then you see everybody's going at exactly the same the right uh -huh. rate and it becomes so obvious that literally every human being is going through the same life is everyone is unique and every life is different seemingly but if you look at the so in the detail it's different but in the in the essence of how how it is for me it's almost identical yeah 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 patience is you know i don't know why i don't have it but it's it, it's on I, I think we're all forced into you know just saying oh that's a good quality too, you know, because the ego says, because he thinks that, you know, time is limited. In fact, his time is limited. Yeah. Yeah. So he has this whole weird idea of what time is and what yeah. it's supposed to be for. And yeah. And a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear for, that self has is in my time's running out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. He's looking at account. I remember someone saying to me once, what, uh, watching the clock. You're, you're not a project, you're not a, a work in progress, you're a death in progress. And <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, it's going to happen to every single ego. I, I, and now I see it like an Al Alka-Seltzer where you mm. put it in the water and it dissolves. And so the egos, it's, don't, you don't even have to fight with other egos because it's, it's only here today, gone tomorrow. It's, it's so uh, eff effervescent, you know? Yeah. 
Whereas before you'd say, oh, okay, no, I got to fix that or, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just on a, not in a non-dual way at all, just in a, if from self to self, if you can, um, if you can face, if you can look death in the face, then uh, of course that makes life easier because you, you just waste less time. I mean, that's not what we're speaking about, but yeah, because well, most cells, they, because they, they fear their non-existence, they fear, I fear my death more than anything else. That's really what I'm trying to avoid in most of my activities day to day. Uh, yeah. Distraction from the obviousness of my mortality. That's what self fears most. And that's what, that's what most of life is about, avoiding looking at that most obvious fact. Yeah. And this, this isn't about avoiding that most obvious fact that human beings are mortal. It's the great freedom. This is, this is, the, this is the really good bit about this message. Of course, there never was you to die. There is no one that you really weren't born. So there's no of course, one you, of course, you won't know that until you step no. off. And you don't know it. That's the yeah. thing. That doesn't need knowing. That doesn't need knowing. When they, th this can't die. So if it becomes really very, very obvious, don't ask me how, because I haven't got any methods. But if it's very obvious that this is it, this is all, this is the entirety, this is everything and nothing, there is nothing to come, then how could there be death? Yeah. It's funny because I was talking to someone the other day and they were saying, yeah, when you, when, you know, you'll, you'll find heaven after you die. And I thought, that's true in such a, in such a simple way. Um, yeah. But not in the way he meant. You know, he thought it meant no, he didn't body mean it dying. Well. well, most people aren't thinking of the abyss and the void as heaven, are they? Yeah. Just empty, complete, not knowing. And not even, there's no knowing of not knowing. <laughs> there's, you know, total absence, absence of everything, no, no appearance. Yeah, that's heaven, isn't it? But we do know what it's like. We do know what it's like because we that's deep sleep, isn't it? Yeah, or total freedom, you know? Yeah. And how, how do we long? I mean, really, and there are, this happens quite a lot when people are on their deathbed, you know, that they long for the rest. They, they actually, they're really just inviting death, just like me and you invite deep sleep. Right. Uh, every night you know when you lie in bed and you do you, the, you, me won't shut the fuck up and the thoughts you know the conversation endless oh, you know self talking to self that self talk won't be quiet and you just long to be absent you know just get rid of that annoying yeah noise That's just so that i can rest well, that long for deep, that longing for deep sleep—that's that's quite not always, of course. Some some cells hang on and fight to the death, literally. But a lot of cells, there is a resignation. But but even in my brothers, or uh, you know, unconsciously, everybody wants rest. I mean, yeah. all they can think about. Some people all year long is vacation. Or uh, I just need to finish work. It's yeah. it's like a constant pull. They just think that um, yeah, it's useless or or it's somehow it's not productive or. Um, but but I but that everyone just wants that stasis. That oh gosh, finally. Yeah, and um, I mean most most selves don't ever say this, but I think if you really ask them, they would they would agree that what's what's the best what's the best part of life. And it's deep sleep. And what do you know of deep sleep? Absolutely nothing. But is it bliss? Yeah. What do you know of that bliss? You know nothing of that bliss at all. Do you need to know anything about it? No. Do you need to be present for it? No. Do you need to see it? Do you need to feel it? No. But there it is. 
And we, um, you know, coming back, coming back to the idea of compassion, it's like compassion for that part of you that just wants that, just wants that rest, you know? Yeah. And, and you say, you know, I, 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 I'm going to go there because it's, I can't fight it, you know. It's not like I go, I decide to go there, but I just can't fight it off anymore. I just, it's like su succumbing to sleep, you know? Yeah. But you remember, you, and the thing about sleep is though, if you think, of, do the sleep analogy, we'll do the sleep analogy to death. You, if you think about sleep, you don't succumb to sleep. Sleep just takes you, doesn't it? Yeah. Isn't that how sleep is? You don't suddenly go, oh, now I will sleep. I now I've surrendered to sleep. Well, no, sleep takes you, doesn't it? And then you're gone. Yeah. And then you reappear every morning. I mean, that's how substantial self is. Self just appears and cre creates itself every morning on waking. Reboots the story. Hey, that's a computer metaphor. She got you. She right. got you. Ended. Diana, I'm blaming you for that. I'm not really. <laughs> uh, hoist by my own petard, that was. What you were saying reminds me of this great saying. It says, a man can't build a fire. He can only create the conditions in which the fire can make itself. Um, so you, you know, you leave space between the wood and uh, you put the smaller pieces on. Yeah. And, and way that's what we're doing is we can't really do our own awakening but we kind of can create the conditions where it, it, no, well no no i i, I mean you I have to get it back you have to get I definitely it didn't create yeah. the conditions i fought all the conditions scott i fought i fought tooth and nail i'm sure i did too <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't create the conditions there's nobody creating anything how wonderful is that? All the, all the great artists and all the great musicians didn't create anything. Yeah. How lovely. But in a way, us sitting and talking about this is a way of trying to relax the, the things that were blocking the conditions, like the mind, you know, the, it's just easing the, don't the things start, that were Don't get me started about mind. I'm, I'm almost okay. as anti-mind as I am computers. All right. Let's just leave it at self-compassion then. I, I, don't, I don't, I don't do mind. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Now, what does mind mean? I mean, I've, uh, try and find your mind. Just random thoughts appearing from nowhere, disappearing to nowhere. Out of nothing seemingly something but equally the thought itself is nothing as well hello tim hi david hi um would like to consider a bit with you um compassion yes as relating to those around us which there may be those uh, we love that are struggling mightily with attempt to be good enough. Yes. And, and possibly having conditions that make them feel quite inadequate. And there seems that it seems that all the things that are problems for other people don't appear to be as problems for one that has no problems and some things might be seen lightly or even jokingly and yeah. there can be someone uh, who is feeling hurt because say I laughed at something that seemed funny to me but they felt was an ad inadequacy it's yeah. like and uh, those uh, uh, the persons might be uh, very, very deeply hurt by something where I just 
laughed at something that was obviously mm -hmm. not a problem. Yeah. But it was for them. Yes. Have you had such in your life and how how do you Oh relate? yeah, that's that's very that's very common. Yeah. 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 That we have great love for all of those around us and yet it's uh, not often understood that that's the case because it as you as you said earlier something about it may appear as detachment or non-caring or heartless yeah which uh, is and it's quite the opposite yes mm. um, and the thing about laughing david because I, I this the character <laughs> tim's character is yeah sarcastic and flippant and uh likes mockery um, right. um laugh uh, just naturally laughs at misfortune that's david's character as well yeah. because um but the thing is how how one human being reacts to how another human being reacts you'll never know that anyway no. and um there's no managing that so this is freedom for that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's so, you know, that's beautiful. That doesn't mean to say that you won't, the other person won't say, oh, you've upset me by, you know, you're mocking me or, you yeah. know, you've hurt. Remember how sensitive selves are. Yep. You know, self's very sensitive and right. will do its utmost to protect itself. And one of the best strategies to protect yourself is to blame someone else for how you feel obviously uh, that's yeah. number one on the list for self because yeah. yeah. i've only got two choices i need an answer for why i'm feeling so shit and really i've only got two choices i've either got to blame you or it's my fault mm -hmm. so guilt or, guilt or blame are the you know that that's like night following day for self so yeah. i don't feel good somebody's yeah. responsible this sense of responsibility and yeah. um the great beauty of this message is there's no one who's responsible yep each human being is behaving how it behaves yeah. and how wonderful that it can't do otherwise that's yeah. the love that that is the love so you yeah. couldn't if you uh, if you said something that you thought was amusing you didn't choose to do that that just came out and yeah. the person who took offense they didn't mean to take offense they just took offense yeah yeah and um right. there's, there's wonderful freedom in that and there's such a great piece of in that not trying to sort that out make it right, right. yeah this is the end of um life being you know needing to make life right yeah to, to fix it i'm not it's not saying that life is right as it is it's just simply as it is yeah yeah that isn't it i mean no yeah yeah that's the uh, and that's the unconditional love right it's, even when it doesn't appear loving right thank you Thanks, David. Thank you. Right. Um, we've got about five minutes. If you've got anything else you'd like to... Um, yeah, Tim, can Hi, I Jackie. ask a question? Yeah, sure, so, Jackie. So, so would you say that, like, think, you know, like you're saying that, like, there's no, there's no one here to be responsible or not. Like, like, would you say that nothing could be other than it is? It's not like oh you know i could have like you're saying like i could have had a better life you know yeah. i could have made you know no. or, or not even i could have but life could have been different that that's yeah, it, that's not the case is it or is it what that life could have been different sorry what is the, uh, uh, what's yeah. the, go on say so what's the question jackie so so well, we like we often think, oh, you know, it, 
I, I you know, the, like a different, a, the, the, there could have been a different path for me or a different, yeah. you know, I could have made different choices. So I'm not saying, mm. so I understand that there's no me making choices. Yeah. But, but could, but like, is there any other possibility than what actually happens? No. Not only was there no possibility than what actually happened, what actually happened didn't happen. I mean, it's that ridiculous. I mean, there's, if you want, you, you can't get much more, you can't get any more freedom than that. So when it's obvious that there's only this happening, there's no this did happen. There's no that happened. There's just this happening. And you can't put a finger on that. Mm. Yeah, so it's, so it's not like, oh, that you know, this this is the only path like there's no no path not at all. at all no because this isn't a path this isn't leading anywhere yeah. Yeah. so the, the wonder is that it can i can talk about where tim's come from you know I, if i say it if i say anything about tim i'm just all i'm doing is well all the human being is doing is finding memories and then words coming out mm. which human beings do effortlessly but of mm. course I say that I'm doing all of that. Um, you're just not. Mm. You, you know, you're completely <laughs> superfluous to that, however that works, just miraculously. But if it's obvious that there's only this happening, then there isn't a path to get here. And there's no, if there's no path to get here, there's the, even the path that is spoken about isn't a possibility let alone other possibilities. Yeah. So when the only possibility is no longer a possibility, of course, how freeing is that? How much freedom? It's just completely empty. I mean, that's, that's the essence of why I always waffle on about emptiness is because all of those stories are completely empty. And really that's all we've got. That's all we're ever speaking about. That's all we're really ever thinking about is our stories and other possibilities. Mm. I, I just remember one of the first meetings I went to with um, with Tony a long time ago. Yeah. There was somebody in the audience with uh, terminal cancer. And she, I remember her asking Tony, like, could I have done anything else? And, and I, there was something about the way he said no. <laughs> I don't know, there was such freedom, like there was no like I said, there was no responsibility. Like she was she obviously, you know, it was a very heavy thing. She was carrying that somehow she could have avoided having terminal cancer. And in and the way he replied, like, you know, with the no, you, you could just feel that lift, that burden of responsibility and things could have been different, just lift from her. And well, like she just had terminal yeah. cancer and that was that. It was, well, it isn't, was I mean, there, there, there's most, what you'd say, most human suffering is that, isn't it? what I could have done differently. Yeah. Missed yeah. opportunities, particularly. Yeah, regret. If them. only yeah. I'd gone down that, then my life would have been, if I'd have chosen that instead of that. Yeah. And this this is freedom. You know, we're, we're speaking about freedom from all of that. No possibility. Of course, self won't ever have that. Because I live on, you know, the, the very sense of self lives on the idea of possibilities. Yeah. This isn't a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. It's not one thing happening out of a, you know, like, you know, is it um, quantum physics, you know, that kind of, you know, yeah. that everything's in potential <clears throat> until it actually happens. But that's crap, isn't it? Well, <laughs> well, I'm no, I'm no quantum physicist. So I, I'm like, I've already poo pooed. Um, uh, you can't be good looking and clever. Um, computer, I've already poo pooed um, IT as a science. I shouldn't do quantum physics as well. I'm no scientist. <laughs> the, the wonder of this is that you don't need to know anything for this to be as it is. But possibility, you know, the whole notion of possibility is, is hope, you know, when you've heard Tony is always on about how hopeless this message is. Yeah. But I can't emphasize enough. It is hopeless, but it's also 
um, it's the absence of hope, but that isn't hopeless in the sense of that they're, because hopeless is just, is just as redundant as hope without possibilities. But I think I think as well the kind of hopelessness of the message from yeah it seems to be as well that there are there are no circumstances you know there is no there is no hope of, of making this happen you know like there's yeah there's no like you can't I remember saying in a meeting in, in Buffalo like you, you you can't make it happen but you also can't fuck it up like you can't stop it happening but you know oh. like I mean nothing happens but yeah, there's no, like the self doesn't exist, so there is no influencing anything. Isn't that lovely that you can't fuck it up, Jackie? Exactly, I love that. <laughs> I'm, I'm a lot more likely to fuck it up than I am to actually make it happen. So. <laughs> there's, no, there's no possibility of fucking it up. Yeah, yeah, love that. But you have to, you know, you can't have one without the other, so there's no possibility of getting it right either, Jackie. No. No. Um, yeah, there's a lot. And um, self's not giving that up in a hurry. And I think that's the joy of being like in the meetings or like you know in residentials or whatever. Like, like I know just that that even you know with with a you know illusion of self, there's such freedom. Yeah. I don't know. I I I'm at my freest. <laughs> God, yeah. help everyone. You know in meetings and in especially at Buckland I'm just yeah it's just wild because it's there's, there's no there's no getting it right there's no getting it wrong and there's such that energy is so there yeah. that you know that is so clear it's yeah I, that's you know, even for the self it's I just find it so beautiful to be in meetings especially yeah residential true but that's a bubble you know you can't live in a residential no I wish and um <laughs> there's there's no getting away from the fact that if if you tell all all the selves who you know that there's no hope, there's no possibility of getting it right, there's no possibility of getting it wrong, um, you will lose a lot of friends quickly. <laughs> because that's not something that self wants to hear generally. No. Because it will take it as nihilistic. Um, you know that this this message gets um, accused of being nihilistic quite regularly. I, there's no sense of that here at all. That it is in remotely nihilistic, but from a, from a self perspective, then it can sound like that. There's nothing nihilistic about everything being beautifully, terribly beautifully, awfully beautifully, exactly as it is. How is that nihilistic? It's not at all. Hopeless, yes, not nihilistic. But, but there is, you know, the free, the freedom, even even if it's only like you know temporary, of, of feeling, of, of kind of sensing that there's no better way to be. You know, there's, yeah. there's no. I'd look, yeah. Beautiful. Well, that's that's really. I just wish I just wish that for everyone that they, you know, that um, you could have an ending to trying to fix yourself, to make yourself right. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> there is no you. No. There's nothing right about you either. That's the other. You see, you don't want that, do you? You want there's nothing wrong with me, but you don't want there's nothing right with me. <laughs> well, you can't have you can't have one without the other. Same thing. They come as a package. This is a this is a package deal. Um, it's all inclusive. It's like the the worst holiday deal you, you've ever seen advertised. So what do you get? You get nothing. But that's complete. It's a complete inclusive nothing. Um, what do you get to lose? Well, everything. Um, what do you get to keep? Nothing. Um, Never get to be wrong. What? How do you do? So, um, what? What's in it for me? Nothing. Will it make me feel better? No. The you you won't you won't I won't actually 
you won't gain or lose is completely neutral. What do you mean neutral? There's nothing in it. Neutrals, there's nothing good about neutral, <laughs> but there's nothing bad either. But then in that neutrality, of course, that, that's the wonder of this package, <laughs> this holiday deal, is that in that neutrality, there's everything. Joy and, so joy and sorrow and grief and wonder and sarcasm and playing and anger and everything free, just being what it is, as it is. That's all we're talking about without any questioning it. Well, no longer resisting it, saying it's wrong or saying it's good. I want more of that. I want less of that. Just everything freely appearing. That's how life is. But self resists it or encourages it. That's all. Well, thanks for coming. Um, lovely to see you all again. Um, I'll, you. I've got. Hi. David, did you want to ask me something or say something? No, just saying bye. Um, thanks for coming. If you'd like to uh, make a donation, then by all means do um, via PayPal, um, paypal.me forward slash Tim Cliss, or go to the website. If you haven't had a look at the website, Tim Cliss this yet, then please do so. Uh, feel free. I'll put some, I'll put a few more um, written pieces on there. Um, and I hope to have meetings uh, Monday and Thursday next week. I hope to. How funny is that? <laughs> uh, it's all paradoxical. Don't worry. The other great freedom, of course, which I really should talk about more, is the great freedom to com always contradict yourself and not give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> who, who wouldn't want that so somebody could say but you said so and so i went oh yeah that's fine you never have to defend contradicting yourself again how wonderful is that because you know there's absolutely no way of saying anything correctly so you don't care wonderful that is okay lovely to see everyone i hope to see you monday i'll um oh by the way if you would like to be on the mailing list for an invitation then just do that through the website just email me and then i'll send you um the links to every meeting but lovely thank to you see you all again i appreciate thanks, it thanks tim bye thank you. Thank you. bye just nice to see you bye bye, bye everybody bye. Bye, bye bye who's doing the cat who's doing the cat <laughs> that was matty sorry <laughs> is that cat Matty's doing a cat impersonation. Matty's doing a cat impersonation. Yeah. Sorry. Aww. She was talking. She was talking to Rocky. Apologies. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.